So how much a rock actually changes and how it changes actually depends on a variety of factors. First of all, as we talked about, the type of stress matters. You're not going to react the same to compression than you do with shear stress or tensional stress. Also, of course, the intensity matters. If you put too much pressure or stress in a rock, it's more likely to, to react by cracking or faulting with brittle stress than with ductile stress, which is folding. Right? Also, if you expose the rock to stress too fast or for too long, the rock is also going to be more likely to crack than to bend. Right? So rocks do better under slow, steady stress apply over a long period of time, which actually causes them to bend. But if the stress is applied too fast or too strong, or if it lasts too long, the rocks are going to be more likely to crack. All right? And also, the rock itself matters. If the rock is strong, it's less likely to bend. It's more likely to crack. Rocks can be brittle or plastic-like or more ductile-like. Some are more elastic-like, like we talked about before. And so the type of rock will also matter. So in other words, while one rock will actually fold like you see up here, another rock might actually fault and crack in several places. Because the stress applied might have been different, lasted a different amount of time, or the rock itself may have been different. And we're going to be talking about the factors which lead to this as well. So, as you see here, rock, the rocks towards the bottom are less strong and more likely to deform by bending or plastic deformation or ductile deformation. While the rocks near the top are more tough, so they're more likely to break before they actually bend. And by no way, you notice that granite is a little more brittle than basalt is, which means the contents will tend to crack easier than the oceanic crust will, all right? Since the contents are made of granite and the oceanic crust is called made of basalt. This diagram is showing you is the ductile strain applied to as different blocks of rock at different uh, amounts of stress. So as you can see, as the stress increases, the rocks will react different over, over time. So you see that um, the strain, which is how much the rock is changing, will actually depend on the amount of stress that stuff, of course, applies. You see that rock A will change very, very fast, right? So you have a very steep slope of how much it changes, but then it will finally break because the rock A it was very brittle. So it broke before it actually bent too much. And so it bent very fast and then it finally broke, all right? Now rock B was a little slower to actually bend, all right? And then it, it, it resisted breaking a lot more, all right? And eventually it stopped changing as much and it's more plastic-like. It actually returns to normal after this, this, if the stress were to pass. And rock C, on the other hand, is the most plastic of them all. It's the slowest to change and resist that strain for a long period of time. And it actually bends quite a lot and does not return to normal after it's actually the strain is uh, removed or the stress is actually removed. And so you can see how different kinds of rock can react different to different amounts of stress over time. Over here in figure 11.19, you see another variation of this that rocks react different depending on the composition. Rock A here, which in red, will change very, very fast, and but will crack before it gets to even 5% shortening. So it's a very brittle rock. Another rock, rock green, can actually sustain the pressure a little more, change a little bit more before it actually cracks, but it ultimately will crack as well. Well, the rock in, marked in orange is very plastic and it will actually allow itself to change immensely and very, very fast. And so that's a very, very bendy rock that would change very fast even without pressure. So without actually having to raise the pressure too high, this rock actually bent a lot and without cracking all the way to 20% of the original length without cracking. While different rocks might even get to the point of bending just the same, but they would take a lot more pressure. It's the same thing that the orange rock did. You see, so different rocks will take more pressure to make them change, and they will crack at different amounts of pressures than other rocks will. And it all depends on the brittleness, elasticity, of, or plasticity of this rock. All right? Now, it also depends on the temperature, pressure, and dryness of the rock. You see, Rocks are more likely to bend if they're at high temperature than they are at low temperature. The rocks are also more likely to bend, of course, under higher pressures. And they're also more likely to bend if they are wet rather than, than dry. So, for example, you see on, on figure 11, 20, that a very hot, wet rock will actually bend faster under less pressure than, than a rock that's dry. So, the same rock that was dry 
will actually take a lot more pressure to bend just the same than a wet rock. So the wetness of the rock makes it easier for the rock to bend. But also, if you lower the temperature, it also makes it harder for the rock to bend. It will take a lot more pressure to make a dry room temperature rock bend. So as you can see, temperature, pressure, and the wetness of the rock all make a difference. Now, in a sperm, to actually model the amount of strain that the rocks go into as they go deeper into the ground, you actually see that because the temperature is changing as you go deeper into the crust, it's going to be hotter and hotter because you're closer and closer to the mantle and under more and more pressure, the rocks will be acting differently. A rock near the surface might not change at all because it's not under too much strain or pressure. But as you go deeper a little bit, the rocks might actually start to change. But because the temperature is not very high, the rock is more likely to crack with fractures of strains, which are kind of a bit of strain. But as you go deeper and the rock is warmer and typically wetter, you're going to be more likely to have this rock bend. And you actually see what that with rocks 3 and 4, they're flowing in ductile strains where the rock is bending. So uh, that means that as you go deeper into the crust, rocks are more likely to bend than to crack, uh, and rocks near the surface are more likely to crack. So you see, the take-home point is, strain will depend on the brittleness or ductileness of the material, and rocks can be brittle or ductile or elastic or viscous, and it's also going to depend on how much is applied, how fast is applied, how long that, 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 that stress will last, the composition of the rock itself, the temperature, the pressures, and the dryness of the rock, all of this is going to matter in order to determine how much you're going to be under. And just a take-home point also, that the stress is measured in the metric system in Pascals, which is the amount of force per unit area, or how many newtons per how many square meters of, of, of force of area. And you want to have the British system, it's in PSI. I'm sure you've used that in America is why we use them so far. All right. Now, in the next videos, we're going to be talking about how rocks fold or fault. And we're going to be learning about these two types of strain, the ductile and the brittle kinds of strain that rocks undergo, depending on the circumstances we talked about in, these, in this video. See you guys then.